Bob Coleman and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. I want to talk about, to start the podcast, about this QuickBooks study. 61% of small business worldwide struggle with cash. That's not a shock. This is this number is um, problematic. 32% are unable to either pay vendors, pay back pending loans, or pay themselves due to cash flow issues. That's a pretty high stat. I would not have guessed that. 69% of small business owners say they are kept up at night. Well, I think anybody who's listening to this has, has issues that keep us all up at night from time to time. Now, I don't know where they get this number, but it's an interesting stat. On average, U.S. small business owners are losing $44,000 a year by not having access to capital. That's coming right off their top of of uh, gross revenues. Additionally, half of U.S. and U.K. small businesses have lost $10,000 or more by not being able to have access to capital. And they also talk about Australia, similar numbers, as well as India. So I thought this was fascinating, gives sort of a worldview. Um, when you look at a small business, a benchmark, QuickBooks is saying one-third of U.S. small business currently has more than $20,000 in outstanding receivables, and those with receivables are pushing it a little bit over $50,000. Hey, John Rockwell of TMC Development stopped by at the Coleman Report Live, and he talked about SBA processing times. I'd love to talk to people in the field. You are definitely in the field. What's going on with SBA processing times on 504 loans post-SBA shutdown? Yeah, we were all wondering how the SBA was going to react to the longest shutdown in history, and it's been phenomenal in our experience. They've been processing better than pre-shutdown. Most recently, we've had a few new applications approved within one or two business days, which nice. I think, yeah, the, the best times prior to the shutdown were seemingly like three, four days. So they've really pulled out all the stops, staffed up big time. I think right after the shutdown some 327s and some lingering backlog were taking longer but as far as i can see they've all caught up and everything's pretty much going um smoothly now lance sexton gave a great webinar this week regarding the new sop and his job my job is to put this stuff all into context listen to his recommendation his guidance to you about how to treat the change on documenting equity injection for loans less than $350,000. Okay, this is one that I wanna to talk to you about. This is a great change, however, I don't trust it. The SOP 5010-5K says on SBA Express loans, SBA Export Express loans, or 7A small loans under $350,000, if as a prudent lender, on a similar size non-SBA loan, you would normally not verify the equity injection. You do not have to do so on an SBA loan. Uh, you know, if your commercial lending policy does not require verification of equity injection, it's saying on loans under 350, uh, I'm sorry, 7A small loans, Export, Export Express and SBA Express, you don't have to verify the equity injection as long as you're not doing that on similar size non-SBA loans. Guys, there's some conflicting information in the SOP. Uh, verifying equity injection has always been an important part of proper underwriting on an SBA loan. Uh, this leads me to, to believe that, hey, on an express loan, we no longer have to verify equity injection. As a prudent SBA lender, I am going to continue to verify equity injection here, regardless of the size of the SBA loan. I think there is a possibility, guys, on, on early default loans, one of the primary areas that SBA talks about that justifies a denial of guarantee is not verifying equity injection. It's in the SOP, it's in the servicing SOP as well. So, you know, they're, they're telling us in the 5010-5K on express loans, export express loans, and 7A small loans, if your bank normally would not verify equity injection, which, quite frankly, most banks are going to require that. But let's just say your bank does not require 
a verification of equity injection on a loan under $350,000. The SOP is saying you don't have to do it on SBA loans. I'm telling you, as a prudent lender, I am going to continue to verify equity injection, irregardless of the method of processing, irregardless of the size of the SBA loan, because this is one of those areas. SOPs are living, breathing documents. And just like the SOP 5010-5J, it changed throughout 2018. It was released uh, and effective January 1, 2018. There were several changes during the year. This is one of those areas I truly expect to see some clarification on. So, again, I'm going to recommend that you continue to properly document and verify equity injection on your SBA loans, irregardless of size or method of processing, even though the 5010-5K indicates that it's that you don't have to. Hey, borrower videos are back. Kurt Chilcott, president, CEO of CDC Small Business Finance, has a nice video. We're going to break it up into a couple different chunks about revitalizing North Park, a community in the San Diego area. Hi, welcome. I'm Kurt Chilcott with CDC Small Business Finance, and we're out in the neighborhood today here in North Park to take a look at some of the small businesses that we have helped over the years to access financing and the important role that that financing has had in the revitalization and the growth of the North Park neighborhood. So uh, we are here at Nomad Donuts, a iconic North Park small business that we've helped to finance and I'm here uh, this morning with Omar Passens. Omar is a board member of CDC Small Business Finance but more relevant he is a North Park resident community activist I call him the mayor of North Park. So Omar's going to tell us a little bit about why small business financing is important for North Park businesses like Nomad Donuts. It's, it's, it's really good to be in this location because as a 15-year you know, homeowner in the neighborhood, I, I remember recruiting neighbors to go clean up graffiti and trash and doing the things, the sort of neighborhood level aspects of, a, of, of building community. But businesses like Nomad come in with the right mindset, they clean things up, they're getting a loan from CDC Small Business Finance to infuse the capital that created this space is really making a difference, like not just in having a good place to get donuts and coffee, um, but also to build community in a way that matters. Yeah. It's the tapestry of the community. Yeah. It's the connections between the community institutions and the small businesses and the residents that really make this work. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. We, we, we see it over and over again in this community, and I think that one of the things that I really respect about CDC Small Business Finance is if you look around you, it's committed to the type of transformation in neighborhoods that really need a little boost uh, with, with capital infusion. That really makes a difference. So it's, it's really great. So Brad, tell us a little bit about uh, why North Park and what sort of the importance and the connection between you, Nomad yeah. Donuts, and the neighborhood. I live and work and play in North Park. I think it's one of the most vibrant communities in San Diego. It's uh, up and coming, it's exciting, it's the home of a lot of great food. Um, and a lot of people in the industry work here and it's a very supportive neighborhood on top of that. I could keep going on, it's a great place to work and live. Finally, in our industry profiles, Melissa Butler, PMC Commercial Trust. Melissa Butler is from Dallas, Texas. We're at the Trump Doral here with PMC Capital, uh, PMC Commercial. I apologize. First of all, what do you do for PMC? Well, first of all, we work PMC Capital and we merge into okay, PMC so Commercial I'm, Trust, so you're not okay. incorrect. <laughs> And Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And what we do is SBA 7A financing nationwide. We're a non-bank direct lender providing primarily hospitality lending for hoteliers around the United States. And why are you here? We are, we are at the National Alliance of Commercial Loan Brokers. We are, we are here 
to meet and greet a lot of the brokers that we wouldn't normally get to see. We've not been here very often. We've only been here a couple years. This is my first year, and I'm looking very forward to meeting a lot of people. I met a lot of people yesterday evening. It's amazing the number of brokers that are here this year. I think it's record-breaking, if I understand correctly. It is over 900. Melissa, very quickly, what is your credit box? What type of transactions are you looking for in this environment? So we, are, again, are primarily a hospitality lender, although we do other SBA-eligible type businesses. Our loan sizes are about a half a million to five million, five million being the maximum for SBA 7A. Um, we look for acquisitions, refinances, um, but it must be an owner-operated, income-producing business with real estate in order for us to be interested. Well, very good. Well, Melissa, thank you for stopping by. Thank you I so enjoyed. much. Thank you for joining us today for the Coleman Report Update and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time.